This one is my low frequency. Yeah, and on this side, yeah. if I make the round thing, and I, I, you know, I play for years with it. 
but I want exactly how I have the frequencies controlled yeah, yeah. with that one. And did it the low part, just I can do like a uh, low. And we have orientation workshops, which is a week long. And um, it's not connected it's like three or four times a year. So people apply and we give them a room upstairs. Uh, and only for the output of the sensor. Oh, it's getting five you volts. get a space to work in the studio. Uh, yeah, yeah, I use five volts for now. Oh, yeah, and what's important? But um, hey. yeah, yeah you know, usually what happens is that people just, just send out proposals saying the young, youngest participant. And then. Yeah. It seems like it's better he likes cameras a lot. You know, he knows himself yet? Yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 I think so, yeah. Or they'll say, oh, maybe they don't need that, so they can just come here and work on their own projects. No, it's more for... How long does it get last time? Uh, battery. I don't know. But I'm not using it. But yeah, if I put it inside, I get a nice power. Yeah, yeah. A proposal. Yeah. And you got kicked out. Yeah. yeah, but if 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 you talk and you're yeah, playing, yeah, so you're so you talking not so loud, but it's it's a little bit. Well, we hadn't really done that. Yeah, Redesign a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's okay. Yeah. 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 Can you redesign a little bit more exciting? <laughs> it's all year. <laughs> I once uh, screwed my uh, sample uh, library. And uh, now it keeps on telling, uh, there, there's a sample missing when I open the, the file. It says uh, there's a sample missing from in the, in the library. Really, don't. <laughs> Explain you later. You don't like being on camera? Uh, not now. Can you send the... Okay. Yeah, they, uh, yeah they, each, each company has a different set of...
make it my own. <laughs> Now a good time, or do you want to do it tomorrow? And what what is it exactly what you want to do? I think I think Otaku was saying that um that there's new there's two new things that need to be documented. Oh. Okay. These two? Yeah. Okay. So that's already a little bit older.
They're probably always four. Yeah. 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 Ye
So a minute description. Um, the idea of the sound scratcher is that you can literally scratch your way through a number of sounds. And what you have is these two handles. You pick them up and you have to aim them to each other. And I will not do it right now because of the sound. And by just changing the distance, you can select pieces of the music that you're listening to. So you have one long sound file, and by changing the distance, you select which part you want to listen to. But there are some hidden extras. For example, if I make very fast movements, I am able to go to another sound. And uh, let me just demonstrate how it works. And when you put them down, the sound goes away. That's the sound scratch. This is the sound shaker. But let me turn the shaker to the camera. And Michelle and I came upon this idea that we wanted to make some kind of musical object uh, which you had to shake. And of course, you can think about a lot of percussion kind of things where you have to shake and make sound. But we thought, now we want to do something different. And then Michelle suddenly realized, hey, what is a typical shaking object? That's a ball with snow in it. And then I thought, well, maybe we should make it typically Dutch and with typical Dutch music. So we do a really well-known Dutch song called Tulpen uit Amsterdam, Tulips from Amsterdam. And uh, of course, I made the whole setup and so on, and then I had to find the proper object. And in Amsterdam, at a souvenir shop, it was not really a problem of finding this fantastic looking tulips from Amsterdam ball. Anyway, the idea is it stands on the table and you pick it up. And by moving and turning, you will change the music. And there are also some surprises, which I will show you. This object is called the headbanger, and the idea with this is it's just a set of headphones. You pick them up and you put them on your hand, head, and you, you start moving. What you will hear is rhythmical music. 
and basically the amount of movements of your hand will determine the speed of the music and then you can also do some kind of filtering mixing and so on and it's a great object uh, to play dance music because that's what it is and most of the time you see people really going out of their head when they play with this and since all these movements are typically headbanging moment, movements that's why we call it the headband so I will demonstrate it to you still the music stops again that's it okay the crackle box is one of our oldest instruments it's been designed by Michel Weisfis and it's a complete uh, you might say musical instrument because this whole box also makes the sound uh, the idea is uh, by touching these surfaces you, you become part of the electronics so the conductivity of your skin determines what sound comes out of it. So people who have very dry uh, skin will probably get a completely different sound from people who are very nervous or whatever. And uh, this is something that Michel Weiss just discovered when he was playing around with old analog synthesizers himself and opening them up and discovered that by touching all strange kind of wires Sometimes he would get a shock, but in a lot of times he would get completely new sounds. So, that is uh, the main reason that he came up with the idea to build something like this, and he called it the Crackle Box, and it's a very successful instrument. We are also selling it, and at the exhibition, lots of people keep on playing it forever. So I will demonstrate what you can do with it. Switch it on. This object is one of our two sound windows, and this one is called Portraits. And basically it's a touch screen, and what you see is nine pictures, eight of composers and one writer. And by touching their picture, you will start an excerpt of their music, or of their spoken word. And of course you can just listen to that fragment, but you can also caress the composer. And in that case, you will change the music that they are playing. For example, here's... As we all recognize Stravinsky. Joe Satriani. Michel Weisfis, our artistic director. And... I can touch them, and as you heard, you hear a normal excerpt, but now I will touch and start caressing. Okay, yeah.
this one is called the ear pilot and the idea was to use an ordinary game controller in this case a sort of fighter plane game controller where you can do flight simulations with but now instead of doing this kind of stuff make it music with it because they're really nice controllers and in this instrument there are a number of different sounds which you can select with buttons and then by moving the joystick and the handle you can manipulate the sounds so let me start by just playing some stuff <laughs> This is, the, this is the second sound window and it's called Sonic Aladdin. And here you have a sort of blank window in front of you. And the idea is that just with one finger you touch it, you press and then you start moving around and explore all the sounds that you will discover. It's again, it's based upon a touch screen and you will discover that by touching the, the, the screen on different positions, you will start with different sounds, and so there's lots to explore. Let me demonstrate it to you. <coughs> This instrument is called the finger web and originally designed to be a complete electronic music controller with lots of possibilities. It has now ended up being in the exhibition and that's one of the reasons that we decided to sort of uh, hide parts of the interface for the public because it's such a complex instrument that it becomes impossible to learn it in such a short time. So basically now what you do is you just use the strings over here. The idea is that with your left hand you play sounds by just grabbing the strings together and with your right hand then you grab the other side and you start pulling the strings. And while you're doing that simultaneously you just listen to what happens to the sounds. 
And what is very interesting that a lot of people who have never played music before in their life, they suddenly are making music. And very often they spend 10 to 15 minutes just playing with this because it's so nice that they can do something while they have never learned to play a music instrument before. So it's very intuitive. Let me demonstrate this to you. Thank you. 